Hey everyone, how's it going? As though I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Totally can hear you. If 2020 has taught me anything, it is that soft, squishable things are very important. And I don't have pets, so stuffies. Stuffies is what I need. And you might be asking yourself, but Jess, we know that you've made some stuffies before. You've shown us flounder. And that's true. I've actually made three. Specifically... These guys. But... But, you know, only one of them is squishable enough. Because Tito is too small and cute. And Liz is wired so that she stands up on my shoulders. And, um, okay, Flander could do, but I'm thinking of a bigger option. So, uh, I am going to make an Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender. When I say an op, I mean an op. I hope. I mean, I've got limited material. And by material, I mean the polyfill. The polyfill is limited. Um, but I'm gonna bring you along. We'll see how it goes. top he's in, and he's looking a little oblong, and part of that is because I didn't want to fully stuff him, because then I have to unstuff him, and there's a limit to how many times I'm willing to do that, but I like, for the most part, I might trim the shape in a little bit, so that the tail doesn't look like he's come in fully in that now, which I do recognize is how I didn't need this piece. But I might either with a that's a, or a a dart at the top, or I might just take in some of this curve. We'll see. Um, next thing that I want to do is make the head. Basically, I'm going for the dome top, that's where the air would be, and then the kind of muzzle out of some fleece. So I finally get to cut something that isn't fur. One less vacuum for all of us.
got the head, or at least the, the like furry part of the head where the arrow's gonna go. And then I made the muzzle. And when I made it, I then realized that there's, you know, fur on the underside of the head, um, his chin area, and that it has a little tuft that sticks out. So I decided to just make a bottom piece using that um, after having cut the felt up. And so what I'm what I'm noticing now, uh, I knew when I was cutting out this piece that this was going to be more sculpted on instead of seamed on. And so I did make this piece so that it would line up more with that and that at some point I will top stitch the muzzle down into place so that it's not... Um, I might stuff it as well because it looks like he's got like chubby cheeks. Um, but what I'm also realizing, and I kind of saw it here, is that the fur from his top uh, antler part of his head does overlap his eyes, which would go about here. So I tried to combat that by putting an extra little bit of stitching at the front and over about where his eyes would be, um, which I didn't lift up the stitch there, and I did it with basting stitches, so it's prone to coming out, because this is all potentially coming out. Um, and so I, I did that so that if I were to completely expose it, then I could get all the way to the seam here, but not here, so that it was gonna give some of that overfall. And then I realized, upon looking further, that ridge goes all the way around his head. And so meeting up here might be important, but I still need it to look like it's a little chubbier up top. So in the past, uh, taking some thread when I'm in the hand sewing stage, um, in the middle of stuffing, and attaching it from this side through the stuffing to this side, and then back, and then back, and then back, to keep that shape separate. And I might do that again. Um. So, I can't really say for how it looks in camera, but um, it looks like a blob, and I recognize that. Uh, I also know that there's no antlers on it, he doesn't have ears at the moment, there are no legs, he's being held literally on with pins that makes him look a little bit more abominable snowman than Papa. Um, but I can kind of see where I'm going, and I still have room to manipulate him, so it's not like I made him ridiculously too small. The head, I might need to cut new pieces for the top here, but I like the direction that the bottom of the head is going. Um, I just based it on the muzzle, so it's got plenty of problems, and most of that is because I plan to hand sew it at some point, and the machine sewing just does not have the same control on small pieces like that. But I think before I commit to making new top head pieces, I'm going to start making at least the first two legs, maybe four, maybe three across the side, and one so that we can see from the direction you guys are looking at it, um, like the, the diagonal side. Uh, we can see what it looks like, because that will help out how long the tail is going to be, and the spacing, and how wide this top is going to be, and then I can start messing with the arrow. So I think the arrow is when it's going to come together and start looking 
a little bit more. Like, oh, the air helps me. So I'm losing my light. It is 2.30 in the afternoon and I'm losing my light. Um, gotta love winter. So I like the length of it so far. I have a feeling that I'm going to um, have a slightly different opinion when I edit the body. And so I'm going to make all of them, um, and I'll probably put the put the toes on because that's something that I don't I like the the width of this. I don't think I'm gonna need it to change. Um, they are gonna be a little bit less than Appa's like real legs. Um, actually, now that I say that, I'm not gonna make all of them. I'm gonna edit the body and then make them um, at that point. I will probably also recut the head tonight before I rejoin you in the morning. Good morning. So, I've made progress. Uh, I've slimmed up this top panel and I started adding some detail and you know he's looking a little bit more like a sky bison uh, I think when the arrow goes on that's when we'll really get the view of it but right now almost everything is pinned together instead of sewn the, the fur for the top and the back is sewn but everything else is pinned so let me take it apart and show you what I did. Also, I decided that it is no longer Appa. It is now Blueberry Spice Head. Like, teenage Blueberry Spice Head. So. So this is what I did for the head. Made another, well, it, it was meant to be rounded edge uh, that comes to a point, and that point then intersects with the this point from the original head. So originally, I had this sewn up, if I remember correctly, um, and then I added the the muzzle up here. And it was giving that really, like, lumpy looking head. And so, instead of completely recutting new pieces, I decided to try putting in this. Because I noticed on the pictures of Appa that he has a wider head than I was making. And so, this was my solution, and it looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. And so... Now I'm going to make a an, one of the arrow marking pieces on here, 
and I'll of course base it onto the, the fur side. Um, and then for the body piece, when I unpick that, I'll make sure that the width of the arrow piece is the same, and I'll match those up when I attach the head. So I realized that uh, Sky Bison have this extra piece up top that it has uh, where their eyes are, and then their muzzle comes out below it. And so I added on the extra piece, and I'll probably paint on some uh, puffy paint eyes. We'll see. Sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. Um, I added the horns by taking triangles of black fabric. This one's a particularly weird, fluffy texture um, that makes it good for sculpting, but I could get the same result out of using some fleece. And basically I made it into, uh, I cut it into some not normal shaped triangles. So kind of isosceles, but with a little bit of a curve in order to get this slight curve thing. And I sewed up one edge and then turned it inside out. And by turning it inside out, you get some of this weird curvage going um, because you're, you're forcing the fabric a little bit more than you would if you're making say a garment and then I just stitch it on. The ears are again triangles so the top um, I made out of fleece or the bottom I made out of fleece the top out of fur and just kind of guesstimated where that was gonna go. Yeah um, I also made a tongue what because well I need to cut some threads but uh, who doesn't want a blood? Cool. So, at least for the moment, the head is complete. And I say for the moment because if you, um, if you notice right now, let me try to get the stuffing a little bit more even. Um, if you notice right now, there is no distinction between the top, uh, the fur piece, and the lower piece, and later on I'm going to, uh, when it's attached to the body piece, before I stuff the body, I'm going to, or like, final stuffing of the body, I'm gonna uh, put a few lines of stitching in and pull this in a little bit, so that there's that clear distinction between the fur and the not fur. Um, I'm also going to take a pin and pull out the extra fur that might be hanging out inside of the um, inside of the mouth. So it'll look something like this, which is also why I'm waiting on the puffy paint, because I don't want to puffy paint and then find out that I need to make the eyes a little bit lower so you can see them. So I'm not going to stuff it. Cause I'm gonna have to unpick everything. But the plan is, so this is the top piece, and we've got the bottom two pieces. So I'm going to unpick it so that I have a full um, amount of stuff to work with. I had already cut down the seam allowances so that they are lined up again. And I'm gonna make the 
arrow for the top. I'm going to, on the bottom pieces, attach the belly, and hopefully I can get some of that ribbing look that Sky Bison have, and then put it back together again, see whether it looks right. I've got the head pretty much finished, um, minus the extra details and clipping of threads. It is almost ready to be attached. You can see where I'm gonna attach it, which it lines up pretty darn well, which is sweet. Um, I've got the arrow going on the body here, or well, I guess it's not the arrow, the top is the arrow, and then just the rest of the markings on here, which looks pretty good. Um, I still need to decide what the tail looks like, so I'm holding on to all this extra fabric. If I flip him, I've got the belly good up till here, and then I, I now have to decide whether or not I'm going to unstitch this end and stretch the fabric out, or whether I'm going to go in and sew in a dart right here, which I'm not sure that either of them would be easier, but both of them are possible. And then the rest of this tail portion is going to uh, line up with the tail itself to create that. Uh, I've learned it's a manatee, not a platypus, uh, step tail, so it'll be I don't know, something like that, with this on the underside. Um, I had hoped to make the lines in here. I might still go back and do that. I don't know, it depends on how this works out. So tonight, I'll probably work on this off camera, and then next time I see you, I will work on the legs, because the legs are the last. The legs and tail are all that's really left. Look at that face. I mean, just look at it. This is gonna be one happy sky face. Okay, so it's day three on my lovely little blueberry spice head. Uh, last night off camera, I did unpick pieces and sew them down. Uh, I have to redo it here because I need to I think I need to stretch the fur a little bit more. It was doing a little bit more creasing than I could handle. Uh, I have pinned the last section because I don't actually know whether or not it's gonna go all the way up here or whether I'm gonna stop here and then attach it to the tape. So I have two main things to finish up this project. So I've got the legs and I've got the tail. And as much as the legs are going to be important for the overall look, I know about how big the tail is going to be all day. So uh, when I attached on the markings up here, I did not cut the last bits. So I'm just going to flip that up. I've made the tail length choice already. So it's going to be about yay big but it's a little too skinny. I need it to be a little wider. So I'm going to attach pieces of the tail fabric to the side in hopes that when I do attach the markings, it'll help hide the seam a little bit. And what it seems like from watching the rest of Core is that the tail does come in a little bit and just gradually comes out and does like a rounded manatee shape at the bottom. 
So I'm gonna overdo it on the width, knowing that I'm gonna cut it down. All right. So we're back with lunch break on day four. So nothing has changed for the majority of blueberries that I get here, but she now has her tail. So I had to add in this piece and another on this side, this piece here, in order to get the sprawl out, otherwise it would be this wide, which does not give the look I was going for. So, oh, that's some red here. Alright, gonna look at that. Um, and of course I've clipped no additional thread, so we're gonna we're gonna pretend. So I added those pieces of the white fabric and then I trimmed out the, the markings and stitched them down just like I had done up here and decided to go with the full tail cover. And then on the bottom, it's not completely sewn down yet, so I'm still able to take the stuffing in and out so that I can get the legs and the head attached. But I trimmed off the excess here and also managed to sew it up down here. Okay, so what is left now is just the legs and then final stitching. So uh, the head is still not actually stitched on. It's just pinned in place because I wanted to keep that as a final thing in case I needed to make any edits. But we still have the legs. So sky bison have three legs on each side of their bodies. And so they've got one more would be over here. And I like the thickness of the legs, especially this one, um, down here. But I think I want to make it a little wider at the top. I'm probably going to make the tubes just like tubes, but then sew them on so that the sleeve is at an angle. Something that uh, I did do somewhere over here in this mess. Ah. Well, okay, that's not the one I wanted. That was the oldest one. Here's the new one. So I had started with this, where it's just a circle, and then I attached the toes. And so the leg would be attached here, and then the toes would be stitched on and stuffed. But that didn't give enough toe definition, so I made this one, where if I turn it inside out, we would be able to put the leg in here and actually have the separate toes. So this is the result of the leg. So basically, I cut out a trapezoid here. So it was 11 inches on the low end, 14 inches on the top, and then a line to connect them, give or take some fuzz, because fuzz plays a big one. And you had seen me cut out the shape here. So I added those toe caps, which are schnazzy. And what I did to attach this to the paw was I went around the semicircle, keeping the seam at the back for all of them, because these are the toes are going to have to face forward. And so I sewed around the semicircle and then realized that if I sewed all the way around on the inside of this, that uh, the toes would be inside the foot, which is not going to fly. So I just did the semicircle and then I back tacked a little bit on either end here, making sure to catch the actual uh, okay, making sure to catch the actual fabric instead of just the fuzz. So then when I turn this inside out, so there's the, the palm 
um, somewhere in here. There's a toe. So I'm going to turn them inside out. I'll then get the toes able to pop through the holes between those tacks. So here are the two tacks just inside out, and there are the toes. Um, so this is what the entire paw kind of looks like from the bottom. And I'm like, uh, I'm gonna go grab the stuffing so I can show you what it looks like. And that'll be the book. I'm already guessing, though, that these legs are too long because they look kind of creepy, but I'm going to pin them on anyway and give it a try. So I decided that the legs were too long which I hope it came across that way. So now, uh, here, let me pull some of the stuffing out and show you. So they used to be this long, approximately, and now they're this long. So I kind of guesstimated and I would put them up next to each other, find the point to and then restuffed. I tried to arrange it so that the leg is coming off about the angle that I want it to. So I want these to be mostly pointed down, so that's where I'm placing this. Just gonna scooch that up a little bit. Cool. And so then I'm just pinning into place, which does mean that I'm stabbing myself a lot, but you know what, that's okay. So now I'm going to, oh yeah, this is him splooting because everyone needs a good sploot. So I'm going to grab some white thread and a needle and just whip stitch into place. So, for the most part, my sky bison is done, but I still have a couple things, so I still want to see if I can indent this part of the face so that it's a little bit more relieved, and then I'll puffy paint the eyes. I also can still stuff and unstuff him, so I'm gonna have to sew up the sides, probably with a whip stitch of the belly, which will close off um, any exposed seams at that point. And you know, there's a couple of other little bits, but you know, the end is in sight. The end is definitely in sight.
Okay. So, after a week of work, I'd like to introduce you to Blueberry Spice Hut, my sky base. So, it's been about a week of work. Um, I started last Saturday, and this is now a Sunday. And most of that was off time because during the week I have a day job, but that time off gave me a chance to come at certain problems in a different light, like the shape of the head changed, how I was going to do the muzzle and the face, uh, how long the legs were, and also how to do the paws and the toes. All of that came after some time off, maybe not work time, but some time off to just let it ponder in the back of my head as I did other things. So she is quite sizable. I used up the full pack of polyfill, which I think I threw the bag out, but it was like a sizable bag of polyfill. Um, and I had bought two yards of the cream fur and one yard of the dark gray brown fur and then I think one yard of the brown fleece as well and the rest I had in my stash so I had this lighter brown the black for the nose and the horns already so I think altogether it was about $30 of supplies and a week of work and I have a nice squishable companion for squishing over this winter. My favorite part, her tail is still crooked. So, you know, she always looks like she's wiggling around. Yep. So I hope that you all have a safe and happy holiday season, and that, you know, 2021 is here and better. I hope that doesn't age badly. Dabbing myself with the pins that the head are attached with. Loosely attached with. Um. 